tutorial. Um, I'm going to try to do this one without rambling on. This is like the third time I'm doing it. I keep getting interrupted. And then I ramble on because I forget where the heck I'm at. So let's jump right into it. Um, we're going to build our first view into Django. Uh, but before we can do that, let's go ahead and open our views.py file because we need that open to build a view. And we got to understand what the views.py file does. Now I'm going to try to explain this as simple as possible. Um, the views.py file takes a request and per our code will return a response. All right. So that's how the internet actually works. If you didn't know that, it takes requests and provides a response. So when you go to a website, for example, YouTube, because that's probably how you found this video, um, you clicked on the link to my video, you sent a, um, you clicked on a link that took you to an URL. That URL sent a request to Google or YouTube, whoever you want to call it, um, their servers. Their servers said, okay, this URL came in, so we're going to return this video. So the request being the URL and the response being the video or the HTML document that contains that video. All right, so that's all we're going to be doing here is, hey, if a user ends up on this URL, which you won't actually see that in views because that's handled in the URLs.py file. But if the user ends up on this URL, we're going to respond with this type of data. All right, it's all we're doing in views.py. Don't overthink it, it's very simple. Um, if you're confused, ask a question on YouTube, I'll be sure to help you out. Um, so the next thing we need to cover is um, what kind of data we can return. Well, in the previous tutorial, we talked about query sets, correct? And I said, it's very important that you go to djangoproject.com uh, and read about the query sets. Please do that if you haven't done so. Uh, it's, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to beat you up too much about that. But we also need to know how to query a database because that's how we're going to return stuff to the user or send our response to the user using the database. Okay. Now that we got our views.py file open, let's go ahead and take a look at the from statement at the top that's included. And it says from Django dot shortcuts import render. What is render? Well, render is a shortcut like it says it is. Um, basically what it does is it helps us handle the request and response. Now um, we're going to take a look at this very shortly, but just understand it helps us handle request and response. I'll explain it more when we get to writing our code. Now in this in this view, what we're going to do is return all our blog posts to the user, kind of like you see in WordPress or any other blog type uh, frameworks. You return I don't know, like a max uh, 10 blog posts. That's what we're looking for. I think they call it an archive. Anyhow, we're going to go ahead and return that. So like in the previous tutorial, we needed to uh, a way to query the database. Well, how do we access that database? Well, we need to um, import post into our into our views just like we did into our shell. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll do um, from dot models import posts. Now in the shell we did from uh, blog dot models import post. Well we did that because we weren't actually in the blog uh, directory but now since the views are in the same directory as models we can just put dot models and it will do that. We could put blog, but that's just kind of like repeating ourselves. So I just leave it out. So from dot models import post. Okay. Um, now that we do that, we have access to our database that contains our blog post. All right. So that's very important if we want to return blog posts to a user. Now, the next thing we're going to do is create a function. This function is going to handle the request from the user side. All right. And then at the end, we're going to return a response. It's pretty simple. So let's create a function, and the way you create a function in Python is def, basically define a function. All right. So I try to be very uh, descriptive with my function name. So uh, since we're going to be returning a list of posts, let's call it list of post. List of oops, post. All right. And this takes one required argument in this case. Now not. Not every case does it take one required ar argument, but in our case, it takes one required argument, and that's request. All right. We'll see uh, in a couple of tutorials uh, a couple other arguments that we will put in there, but just keep that in mind because I remember uh, working with someone who thought it only took request, but it does take other arguments. So anyhow, let's move on. And the request is the 
basically what the user is requesting per the URL. All right, so request. All right, so in the um, previous tutorial query set, we got all objects by um, doing post.objects.all. All right, so we want to get all our posts again, but <clears throat> there's no difference in how we did it in the shell. So if you go into the shell and like, how am I going to access this post or access all these posts? That's why I showed you the shell is a great place to practice. Instead of writing out the code in your views.py and running your server and seeing if it's working, that can be hectic. Why not just go in the shell and do it? That's why they have the shell there. All right. So anyhow, we're going to do it just like we did in the um, previous tutorial. We're going to do posts equal to posts.objects.all. All right. And we're going to save it. Um, so that's how we access all the posts. We're going to get all the posts. All right. And then um, the, the variable post is going to represent all those objects. Pretty cool, right? Um, all right. So the next thing we want to do is we have to um, return something or send a response. So what are we going to do? We're going to first type return. All right. And then we're going to rent, render a response. Now, render is the shortcut we talked about couple minutes ago and render takes two um, required arguments and the first one's request and that request is what the user is requesting all right um, so request request all right and the next one's going to be the template now we haven't built any templates yet but the easiest way to think of a template is it's just an HTML file so if you build an HTML website before you know what an HTML file looks like all right, so um, right now we're probably going to put our templates. I try to keep my stuff organized. So our templates are going to go into a template folder. And then inside that folder, we're going to have a blog directory. And inside the drog blog directory, we will have a post directory. And then in, in there is going to be our HTML document. So it's going to be a list of uh, post.html. All right, so these are two required arguments when you work with render. Um, so we need a request, and this is our response. Request, response. So the request is, hey, I want all the blog posts, and then this, our response is going to be uh, whatever's in this HTML document. So if we left it like this, um, we would have to change a few things. But if we left it like this, we could technically just return any HTML document to the user. And... Uh, if it didn't have a blog post, they'd probably be upset, but that's how it works. It's the request comes in, and then this is a response. Pretty cool, right? But we want our site to be dynamic, correct? Um, so blog posts will constantly be changing because whoever's our authors are writing these blog posts. We need a way to query the database, and we want to include our uh, queries into our... Um, documents. So this might be a little confusing at first, but basically what we're doing is going to get the context. And the context being a dictionary that contains our posts. So a string of post, just like this, right? <clears throat> so this is our context. And this is housing our post, all right? So, all right, sorry about that. I had to pause the video real quick. Uh, I had a phone call. But anyway, um, we're talking about context. So what is context? Context is a way we are going to take our dynamic data and put it into the HTML file. So basically, this is the key. This is the value. Now, if you look back at post right here, these two go hand in hand. All right. This post variable over here holds all our blog posts currently. All right. And this is how we call it in the um, in the um, uh, template okay we'll look at this more in the future when we start working with the templates so you'll better understand this since we haven't created a template yet and there's one more step before we can get to that point I don't want to harp too much on this but once we create the template then I'll uh, point out exactly what's going on here so right now um, if we were to run our server we wouldn't be able to see this because we're not we don't have a request coming in yet because we haven't handled the URLs. All right. So I kind of want you just to imagine what's going on here. Say the user requests all our blog posts. Okay. So that comes in, the request comes in, the user's requesting all our blog posts. All right. 
we're going to provide a response, and that response is going to be our list of post.html file. Okay, inside that list of post.html file is going to be something called context. Now, Django has this um, template um, renderings. Uh, I can't think of the name off the top of my head. It allows us to put um, Python code into our templates. Kind of like if you ever use PHP or something like that, you can use PHP in, in, um, t in HTML documents. It's kind of the same idea. It's um, template rendering. So basically, um, we're going to take this data and we can put it into a for loop within our list of posts. And when we lift uh, iterate through that for loop, we're going to get and spit out our um, blog post. All right. So basically, this is all we need to handle our request and response. It looks pretty simple, right? But I want to clean this up a little bit because I don't like how this all looks right here. I don't like having my template looking like this in my return and my contacts looking like this. So I'm going to show you how I always handle um, this type of view um, how I'm going to handle it from the future just so you so I don't have to explain it every time in the future first thing is I make a um, variable called template then I make a variable called context all right I'm going to take this right here I'm going to cut this out I'm going to put that right next to my template all right I'm going to take this right here cut that out and put that right next to my context okay so just remember, context is like my variables that I'm going to use in my template. My template is my response to the user. And my post right here, this is just grabbing the information from the um, from the database. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in what render requires. So what does render require? Well, it requ requires a request, which we kept there. I didn't change that. Then we can do template, because it does require a template uh, as the response an HTML template as a response. And then we can add in context, which context is actually, um, if I didn't mention it before, is optional, it's not required. Uh, we could just return an HTML document. So that's what that is. All right, so in the next tutorial, we have to finish up um, getting a request, okay? So we're kind of working backwards, if you haven't noticed yet. Uh, most people, when they build a website, they start probably with the HTML document and they work HTML document to the URL, what URL is it going to be, and then the view, uh, how is this view going to handle this request? Well, I found it easier to work backwards. So we started with the database, we started creating some data, and then we went to the view, now we're going to go to the URLs, and then we're going to go to the template. All right. So that's how it's going to work. Um, so in the next tutorial, we're going to work with URLs and handling requests, because um, right here is our response, so now we need the request, and then once we have the request, we'll actually build our visual part of our response, which is the list of post.html. If you have any questions, leave a comment on YouTube. Otherwise, uh, don't forget to like the video, don't forget to share it, and we'll see you in the next one.